Hello, everybody. Welcome back to James and Flav for now. Uh, we have so much to bloody talk about because, uh, well, we've got one week bans and a couple of the one week bans. One includes people using the words title race heating up. And it really is heating up, Flav. It really is. Yeah, it's heating up it's getting hot it's getting spicy um we can have a we can touch on uh eddie howe oh, how many games yep. he got easy on his knees and we're gonna do another thing that's been asked to be given a one-week ban we'll go through our one-week bans because there's some funny bits in there as well but uh someone said combined 11s now uh earlier in the week i was supposed to do a combined 11 with brother rory on the ripple effect weren't yes. able to get it done so me and you we're going to try something different on this football podcast where we previously have tried to keep football out of it. And we're going to try and put together a combined 11. I teased it last week on the podcast that I was going to do it with Rory. The boys at Saturday Social clearly heard <laughs> they, didn't. They, they had the similar idea and did the same idea. So now it looks like which we're copying them, which was a combined 11 between Man City, Liverpool and Arsenal players. What 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 do you think that is the obscene popularity or obsession in football content makers to do a combined eleven? It seems to be everywhere I go. I'm asked to do one. And and do you know what <laughs> what it is? Is they know. I've never asked you to say. do a combined eleven before. Now, no, just to I, say. I, I, I reckon I've done seven this year. Really? Probably, yeah, easy. Across like I've how many of those? I've done it on a social about three yeah. times. I Saturday did it on at the overlap Saturday social. <laughs> I did it on on uh, the overlap. Did People you? love them. They bloody love yeah, them. Yeah, well, they love a Spurs like, Arsenal one, don't they? Yes. Yeah, how Arsenal many? Arsenal. How many of them have been Spurs Arsenal? All of them. Yeah. Um. So this should be refreshing. This, this one refreshing. was good. This one was good, Jim, because I didn't have anyone to argue with me. I just got to say it to the camera, so I just picked who I want and then walked away. <laughs> oh, really? That is good. That is good. Yeah. And this one doesn't involve Spurs, which makes things easier. Then I can have an I actual think, conversation well, about it. I think you're going to enjoy this. I think it's good. Because I think I actually have no problem with a combined 11. I think the problem is when you support the team within the combined 11. I don't support the team within the combined 11. So I actually think this is a really interesting conversation that we can have and go well no, I, I fully understand that there are several great players we spoke about in the pod last week that you know even in the um, centre-back position you've obviously got Saliba, Gabriel, Virgil van Dijk, Canate, Diaz, Kanji if you want to chuck him in there of course and Stones as well bloody hell right and you can only pick two now that's difficult yeah that's difficult and it is difficult it's also you, you can't get it wrong or right yeah, which is the, which is which is perfection when it comes to football content. What what I don't understand sometimes is the anger. It's the anger I don't get. Mate, the, the worst the worst reaction I've got from any pieces of content have have come from combined levens. Like the the the, the, the impact of what you say is no mm. more severe than when you're doing a combined eleven. It's insane, and I don't like. I don't know whether there's a, like a lack of. I don't know whether it's, I don't know what it is. It's just some, it, it's clearly, there are a lot of football fans out there, primarily ones that exist, you know, largely of their, 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 their time engaging in football is on Twitter or on the, in the digital landscape. It doesn't tend to be match day going fans that get as irritated. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, and it's like you've actually, you've, you've insulted their family by suggesting that, <laughs> um, that, 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 that there might be Spurs players that get into this Arsenal team. What's re a really get great shout. So our beloved patrons, who, as I say, again, I, uh, I haven't been able to do the mailbag this week, so we apologise for that. Um, but we normally do. And we've got loads of you now, and it's wonderful to have you all. And someone just said, um, for rattleability, let's think of the worst one as well. So at the end of it, we'll maybe, I'll, I'll do that. And maybe we can like draw, I'll draw it and we'll get it out. We'll put, put it out and <laughs> just tuck yeah, into a bit in. of a engagement. A bit dangerous though, isn't it? Rattleability is a great word. Get it in the dictionary. Do you know, I think my rattleability is miles higher than yours. Don't you think? What do you mean? How easy it is you rattled? I mean, John, uh, someone needs to or give us a full how, definition of rat rattleability. Your resistance. Yeah, I is think it your resistance to it, or how easily rattled you are. Because I think I walk through life without the without the fog of 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 people attempting to rattle me. Really, 
Um, so whereas you have to d- deal with it every every single bloody day. So I, yeah, I, no, but said, it's I, think, not, I don't it's think fine. you get riled as much as me. Oh, I see. I understand what you're saying. I think you're better than me. Yeah. Easily. <laughs> no, but you're after after a while. It's just noise, isn't it? You hear it every day, then it's just noise. I don't even look at like Twitter, for example. Anywhere that someone might be able to access me or want to give me grief, the ones that get me actually sneaky ones. I shouldn't say this really. They're the the, the message requests on Instagram or on, on weird the weirdest one one guna strange found my Facebook account which isn't listed and messaged me on Facebook Messenger or whatever it was how it, however he managed to do it that was odd mm. but other than that yeah it's uh, it's just noise. <laughs> Um, I give a shit. If someone's digging me out for my opinion, that's that's one thing. Dig it like actually physically, like in, insults because I suggested that you know Kane might be a better striker than Thierry Henry. I think, you know, it, this is more of a, a reflection on what what you are than what I've said. Well, it's you know engagement's great, um, but it's about the sort of I guess it's rattle rattle ability is good because like what is your rattle ability threshold? And a combined coming back to the combined eleven. That's a, that's an odd for me. I find that as an odd, a rattleability threshold level where you go, no, he's put Ben Davies in there. I can't handle it like that. I find that odd to me. But I've never, I've literally never experienced the Queens Park Rangers combined eleven because um, it would just be the other team. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, maybe I would get rattled. I don't know. It obviously it's it's got legs, Flav. So shall we begin? Yes. Well, what I do want to talk about after the combined eleven is Spurs, because Spurs will most likely decide the title race. They've got to play all three. And I want to get your thoughts on that. I think Villa have got to play all three as well. Tiny little Villa, barely breathing, hanging by a thread in fourth spot at the moment. <laughs> I messaged that to Flav after, after last week. Yeah. Wound up a few there as well. And, and the comments, this is a bit of a reset pod as well, because um have got much to use from the comments last week because we seem to upset the Liverpool fans. Um a couple of couple of comments from them I've got. But, um, it's not easy. Not a difficult thing to do, is it? No. Um actually a couple of comments. Let's get that out of the way and then, then we will get into our combined look. Ginge Tomasi says the most iconic title win ever. What on earth are you going on about, Jim? I stand by what I'm saying. What was you what did you what was your point? I, I said that so whoever wins it, aside from the Aguera, like obviously in in a moment and we don't know what the final day is going to be like, but I think it will go to the final day. And I think we may very well have a title race with three teams who can all win it on the final day. That's a, a very real possibility right now. And if it does, and you've got the guy on the up in terms of Arteta, fine, you know, building something and then falling and falling and then finally jumping those hurdles to beat possibly the best team of all time, hot off a treble, probably on its way to a Champions League final. And you've got Liverpool with Klopp leaving. All three of those contenders, one team going for four four in a row, one team trying to say goodbye the right way with their, you know, for Klopp. <clears throat> that is iconic, is it not? Whoever wins it. Yeah, I can understand why you're excited about it as a fan of football. From my perspective, it's just Man City. Make my sure Man City wins it and, and that's it. Is it less? Um, like, you know, is it not the most if, iconic title win if Man City win it? Yeah, because it'd be four in a row, which hasn't been done. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah, not been, well, certainly not in the Premier League era. Uh, you got Liverpool. Who, no, I don't think it's ever yeah, been I'm, done. Full stop. Full stop. Okay. Yeah. So, what's the least irritating for me? That's how I look at it, right? So, you got Manchester City. There, you know, it'll be iconic. Like I say, four in a row. Liverpool, I mean, it's going to be bad enough having to suffer the constant fucking news reportage of Klopp leaving. But add to that a Premier League total on top, that'll be awful all summer. We'll have to listen to that shit. And then Arsenal, for personal reasons, is something I could never, never palate. The only thing that Arsenal could do, the only thing that any Arsenal fan could ever do to me or say to me that would have any impact would be if their team legitimately wins the league. And that's... That's something that you know you can't deny as a Spurs fan. Yeah. So um, yeah, Man City all the way. Let's let's all hold hands and pray that that um, the juggernaut nation state backs Manchester City, who've uh, cheated their way to this position by um, you know breaking and stamping on the foundations and the fabric of our game, win the league for the good of it. But I think the important word that you're forgetting here is allegedly. 
That's the important word that you're forgetting here, Flav. Mm-hmm. Do you know what that was? Do you know what that was there, Flav? Legend. Oh, well, that was a little because... line from the overlap. And I think I speak for everyone when I say, what really happened on the overlap last week? Quite a lot. Um, Let's start uh, with the important, important stuff. Harry yeah. from Traitors. What's he like? Lovely. Lovely blade. Really lovely. Yeah, even yeah. his Chelsea. I didn't even talk about that. Just talked about the show. Uh, I didn't know he was going to be there. I just turned around the corner and he was there. I was like, ah, oh, fuck, my wife loves you. Um, <laughs> see, I uh, I thought, you know, do you want to be kind of cool? And then I thought, I'm like twice his age. I can go and, I'm just going to speak to him and find out about what actually happens at, when, when they what, record Traitors. What, so tell me, what really happens on Traitors? I'll tell you after because like, there might be oh. people, thousands of people not watching this who don't even know what it is. Anyway. They do. Uh, what traitors is. It's fantastic. It's a great format, Flav. It's a great format. Yeah, he's like I don't know. Man. He just sort of spoke openly about it. The fact that then you do like then you have a couple of hours sleep a night. Really? And it, yeah, it's a lot more long winded than the show, as you can imagine. Mm. Filming anyway. Um, yeah, he was very sound geezer, very lovely, and um, and that was fine. That was good. It was nice to meet him and that. Um, but obviously, the big one, which I can tell you, um, if people haven't watched it. The, the first episode that came out right at the end, they were talking about financial fair play and it got into a conversation about the, um, w- whether or not it's right or wrong yeah. that, uh, <laughs> Academy or, or homegrown players should be sold to balance the books. And I was listening to it <laughs> and, and, and this basically resulted in a back and forth between me and Jamie Carragher. Yeah. Is that a, t- is that on- a bit, is that a, Hectic week, week, isn't he? It's a hectic yeah. week. And but the, the the weird thing is, is I was saying it doesn't. It's not about right or wrong whether or not a player should be sold. I get it's unethical, but it's it's base it's basic finances. If you haven't even paid to bring that player into the football club, then obviously he's going to be one hundred percent profit. It isn't about what's right and wrong in the game. It's 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 basic accounting. I th- you haven't paid for that asset. Obviously, yeah. it's going to. So, but they're going. Yeah, but it shouldn't be that way. But what? what so you're going to defy basic economics. That's what I was trying. To, I couldn't get it around my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. and, and, and 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 and. But 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 bearing in mind, you're sitting there. Around you, you're hearing murmurings that kind of agree with whatever Gary Neville and and Jamie Carragher are saying, yeah, more yeah. or less. Yeah. And then because... you've got other people chipping in, going, "No, no, you're wrong, or you're not understanding it." And I'm sitting there thinking, "I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right here." <laughs> But everyone around me is going, you're wrong. Oh my, and then Carrie goes, oh my God. Yeah, and then you're getting that reaction. I'm looking yeah. at you and going, stop it, Jamie. This is odd. This yeah. is, I don't want to make do what the fuck you want, but I, I was like, this is strange. I'm, I'm confused here. Because um, so, I was watching uh, it going, can someone else speak up here? <laughs> it's like, because. To be fair, Dan did eventually. Dan did, and he did brilliantly. And thank God for he Dan. Did. He's amazing. He cheers that, for Dan. He's amazing, that guy. The thing I found mad about that was like, I get it. Like, what are you saying? I was going. So, were you saying, Jamie, that you shouldn't get one hundred percent profit from your yeah what from you your academy? Most, you <laughs> yeah, penalise well, players. For, what is it? Yeah, exactly. Oh, what should, you get? You get fifty percent. What exactly? What, Next year ain't right, but it ain't right. No, what's that was it? That's what I couldn't understand. Was well, you, no, this is. It's not a get out of jail card. The stockpiling is maybe that's something you could you could touch on that. We can't go. Well, it's not right that they're selling Conor Gallagher. They've got themselves in this situation, but yeah, they have a... to sell him. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. they not, have. They've got to move. They have to wrong. sell him. exactly. And it's like, but what? Do you, but do you they, want them they not brought to him up. To the... Yeah. Do you want them not to balance the books and just so you don't have to sell academy players? All right, forget the fucking financial rules. Do what you want. As long as academy players can stay at the football club, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any more... sense. And, and and the longer the time has passed, and I've had tons of people message me going, "You were right." Yeah. Which makes it feel better because when I was driving home, James, I oh, told this story a couple of times. And that's why I, met, I sent you a voice note, didn't I? Yeah, you did. You did. That was a, a, a four hour journey. Yeah, but you sent me it to be the next day. I'm driving home a four hour day. journey. Baron, you've got no, you, your memory does weird things. Yeah. And you're thinking, fuck, maybe I, what's I, I was, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> and 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 that is going to be seen by a million people, me being yeah. really wrong. And you know no, that's actually, coming. I don't know, that you know now? that's coming, right? Horrible. You know it's coming, right? And you know it's coming. And I'm driving along and I'm thinking, and then, fuck it, it was a nightmare drive home. It took me about six hours. And I'm like, and afterwards, I was just like, put the radio, I put 
podcast on and went and just forgot about it. And then woke up the next morning. I think it came out the next day, I think, pretty much. Yeah. And I watched it back and I went, fuck it. I knew I was right. I didn't have to worry at all. I was right, 100%. Mate, you were it's right. It's a shame you have to do it. Those are the rules. Yeah, it's a shame you have to do it. But it's but take it out of the context of Chelsea for a second. So make it about Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace have sold all... If they sell these great players that they've brought through by investing in their club and their foundations and their community, they deserve 100% of the... Of the fee for it. It's like, it's, if you just take it out, I get the understanding of like, as a broad scale of like, oh, that's a shame. It's a shame that you yeah, have to sell Colin Gallo. But it's because you keep buying everyone else. I just it's couldn't just believe he'd like got away with it. I found it, it But it, it, it wasn't that clear. Like even, I, I was even having a conversation with Adam and Rory about it before the club yesterday. And they were like saying, yeah, but no, but it's not right. And I'm like, yeah, but you stop it, saying it's that. It's the same thing. It yeah. doesn't, it's not right or wrong is irrelevant. It's it's you you haven't you haven't had to purchase that youth player for fifty million pounds, and therefore when you sell him for seventy million pounds, the profit is twenty. That's what you can put on your PL list sheet. But if you haven't paid for him, i.e. developed him, all of the money you make from him is profit, right? That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, totally. So whether it's a shame or not, that you've had to sell that player is fucking irrelevant. It's so that's, weird. It's that's so what weird. I was trying to process at the time and hold my own and answer questions. Yeah, and getting attacked and people kind of laughing at you a little bit, like unfairly yeah, so. Was that, that, was yeah. well, that as well. And, and what it is, is there is a lot of, um, and, and I understand it, right? I understand it. But obviously you're, you've hear, you're, you hear Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher's voices constantly. They are the voice of the Premier League for all intents and purposes. Their yeah. voices are more recognisable than any commentator, pretty much. Any host, they are the voice of it, right? And, that, and with that comes with it a lot of influence, but also a lot of, a lot of influence over the listeners, but also a lot of influence about how the narrative around football and how you think about it, sure. right? So obviously in that situation with a group of, fans watch who, who, who you know hang on every word they do have a lot of influence in the room as well but it was just in that moment i was just like i don't I'm, i don't understand what you're i don't understand why this isn't going my way <laughs> do you know what's heartbreaking as well is it and everyone has had this everyone can relate to this we've well, had that altercation and then afterwards you've got all of it you've got all the receipts you've got everything you need to say because all you really needed to say was no no jamie they didn't need to buy lavia <laughs> if take away Lavia, you don't need to sell Conor Gallagher, or like or take away Mudrick, you don't have to sell Conor Gallagher, like and or take it out of Chelsea and put it into any other football club. Of course, you get all the profits from the player that you've invested time in. <laughs> it's amazing. yeah, mad, crazy. I had right. an accountant actually, accountant. Did they? Um, touch you. Yeah, you, well, these are my qualifications, and I can tell you, as a registered accountant, this was infuriating to watch. <laughs> Uh, Catherine, well done, Catherine. Uh, wasn't Catherine. Catherine, funnily enough, hasn't hasn't said a word to me this week. Really? She quiet, was, Catherine. Anyone... Quiet. She Is she here? Is she with us? Catherine. Catherine, Catherine Iceland, Villa fan. There, she's there. She, she's uh... there. She's there. Oh, well, I Spotted just remember her. she said she was going to tweet me on full time. I didn't. I was waiting, but it didn't. didn't get it. Oh, why don't you? Hmm. That's funny, that. Yeah, disappointing. Uh, what was Emery yeah. thinking though? Like, just just <laughs> hands up. Excited about this combined eleven. That. We'll get there, guys. We'll get there. Yeah, we will get there. We'll just get quickly, there. just on Emery and and he, he's been fantastic. This well since he joined Villa, incredible, right? Done amazing stuff. But when it started, I kind of get the idea that he was like player back five or even back five. Yeah, player back five, and then hit him on the counter. But the minute it was clear that it wasn't going to work from minute one, and it was almost like you've got the firepower and 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 the player quality to make a difference here and it just played into our hands got it completely wrong first half was okay second half the best we played this season probably do you know what was a great exa- you know we said before i think you had this as a bit of a rant where you were like it you can't talk about refereeing decisions if you support the club <laughs> like you're not allowed not, yeah, not, you're not, the, allowed. not the podcast the club the uh, the, the actual club uh, uh, in discussion uh, i don't want to hear a villa's fan on whether it's a red card or not <laughs> I, and, st- honestly, I honestly token, i was on twitter don't hear mine either. you don't hear yeah, mine either. right 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 Otherwise, I started to read Dan Bardell, big Villa fan. I've had him on my pod. Good lad. I started to read a tweet from him saying it's actually not a red card, but and I just stopped reading it. It's just like, I'm sorry, I'm not my, no, like you're learn. I know Dan, right? I know him well, and you know I've, I've, I've been on him a few things. He is he is one of the best out there. Very very good, right? It doesn't matter what your opinion is on this, Dan. 
and any Liverpool, any Villa fan or Spurs fan because despite as as much as you try, you cannot remove your bias. Do you know you what's really hard all- though? Is that if yeah. you know, like some people go, like Boovy said, um, Boovy said it was a pen, and you again, you can do that when it. So there's the problems, the right? Pen. The pen for um, Doku on uh, who was it? McAllister. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, um, for Man City yeah, and yeah, Liverpool. Yeah, 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 so as a I've fan, got... you've got you you sort of backing so you serving yourself if it's you're saying saying the McGill one wasn't a free kick, or or if you go. Do you know what? It was a pen, but it wasn't given as a pen. So you still haven't been hurt by it in any way. Both of those, both of those kind of like, they like, they make it difficult for you to be provided with credence James. on it. James. It's tough. It's a tough world. You have no dog in the fight, right? And I'm happy to take what your opinion is. And I don't know what your opinion is. You might have said it previously. Do you think the red, John McGinn red card was a red or, or a yellow? I thought... I thought in 2024 it was clear red. I thought in so, 2010 no no it wasn't. So no yeah, he's fucking he's proper whacked him. <laughs> it's bad. It's pretty bad. And, it, the, and the, I, the, the problem was the problem was he didn't give himself. Begin is an incredible footballer, m- massively underrated. Really, really is underrated, and um, and uh, you can absolutely understand why he's captain as the Villa. Yeah, nothing about that challenge is the track detracts from his abilities um and even like i'd i would genuinely love to see him at tottenham not that that's going to happen right but the problem is in that moment what regardless of whether or not you you think it's a red card he lost his mind because he saw destiny doggy dr- dr- drift into midfield yeah he knew he kind of had to take him out but you can do it in a way that's a little bit cuter than just fucking smashing him yeah yeah <laughs> I agree. And the thing is, if a doggy, if doggy, if doggy comes away with that with a fracture, or if it's going, well, it wasn't a red card, but doggy's out now for six months, yeah, or whatever it is. So you can't go into a challenge that that um, frivolously. Yeah, I think nowadays you can't you can't munch people really. Like you can't, and you can't get away with that. Uh, and he was, you know, yeah, he was his his ratability was low. Right, combined eleven. Here we go. Yeah. First up, and we'll have chats along the way. So get yourself comfortable, guys. And, and feel free to play along at home, patrons. Alison, we've got some stats as well here. Alison, with a save percentage of 75%. And his uh, save percentage uh, against his XG is in, is in a good state. It's plus 0.9. If that means anything to anyone. David Raya, save percentage 63%. Bit of a drop off there. Minus 2.5. For his uh, PS times XG and XG and Edison sixty nine percent save percentage. This feels like an easy one. I I have Allison in mine. I'm gonna have Vicario in mine. Ye- okay, let me explain it again. I'll explain it one more time. Combined eleven, right? Son get in only w- no. It's combined eleven. Arsenal, <laughs> Man City. And Liverpool, okay. all right. But, but isn't this, shouldn't this be about, about combined eleven of title challenges, not just the top three? It doesn't make any sense. It's got to be title challenges. Everyone's got to be in this. Are you saying? What are you saying? No, Jim. What am I saying? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sure. I mean, when we talk about iconic Premier League seasons, if they <laughs> imagine if you won it now, Mate, imagine I mean, if you won it now. Does that well, honestly? How is your body feeling now when I just said that to you? Imagine if you win it now. You're getting like you're getting little no. vibrations there. No, no. All I, I just in response to that, I would say, did we win eight out of ten games at the start of the season? <laughs> did we? Yeah. Okay. Is it now that all the players are back and we're up, we're up to speed? Is it an impossibility that we might be able to replicate? Well, we've done it. We've done end. it once. We've done it once already, Flav. Actually, <laughs> so I'm not saying it's going to happen. Obviously, no. Stupid. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. It was a bit of fun at the start of the season. <laughs> Could we? Um, no. All right. Sorry. Let's get back back on back because people will be losing their minds. Um, Three way split. It's, it's Allison. With, the answer is Allison. With, the correct answer. Yeah. Is. Without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, Allison. This is a good one. Who's on the bench? Ray or Edison? 
You'd have Edison. I think you still have Edison. Ray's not there yet. So do you know what's really interesting? I'm going to uh, literally steal something from my mate Weber, who is a Brentford fan. And he he was saying how wild it was that everyone is loving David Raya now because he saved a couple of penalties. And I, I don't sort of disagree with it, but I, I did find it I did find it interesting. Hang on, Keeps just... get a lot of credit for penalty saves, don't they? They do. This is their moment. This is their moment. The uh, do you know what, do you know what's a guarantee if you want to play penalty bingo if if uh, Alan Shearer's on the uh panel is um don't change your mind. <laughs> don't ever chat. That's the thing that always goes on about. Don't change your mind. Um, sorry, just a bit also with the Carragher thing, just because it's in my WhatsApp group. Richard Keys weighed in on the Kate Abdo Jamie Carragher thing. I was just like, is that a real? That's not really his account. That's really his account. Richard read, Keys. Richard Keys said, "Have you the, seen the tweet? The no. The tweet's fucking brilliant. It's so good. He not. He has to know. I think Kate." Kate Abdo is a top pro. I've no idea what Carragher is insinuating, but he crossed the line again. How many more times? The show is like so many more these days. It's a bit too pally. <laughs> it was an accident waiting to happen. Abdo deserves much better. Wow. It was a weird one, though. It was so weird. It was weird. Do you like... know what someone said, which is interesting, right? And if you watch it back, the sort of, um, is it the inclination? What's the right word? This is ironic how you say it he yeah. said not he said not to malik as in not loyal to malik but actually he could have well have been saying not to malik as in you're not loyal to malik instead of yeah. manchester yeah. united but it didn't come across like that no it didn't it come across like i know something you did yeah what that's what, um it was, the other yeah. thing is is that whoever she's doing them. it with should be very careful because malik scott is like a <laughs> 44 fight veteran heavyweight boxer yeah, you don't take on Malik. Absolutely not. Okay. It would be well funny if it's Thierry Henry and, and, and Malik Scott just batters him. I mean, that is the easy wonderment that could f- cross your mind. I mean, I would. Yeah. So my mate Weber said, this is a direct quote, it's funny that it takes the random luck of a penalty shootout for many Arsenal fans to decide that Raya is a good keeper. I think he didn't save a penalty for us in about five years. <laughs> Who's at Brady's Brentford? At, in the championship, he saved one from 12 for Blackwell in 2019. In the Premier League, he's got one from seven for Arsenal uh, in 2023. Does that make sense? Yes. So, mm. um, so he nearly saved three from four last night. Didn't. But he said, but it's such an irrelevant part of the role. It's like saying I'm not good enough for my job all year, but I'm really fun at the Christmas party. So give me a promotion based on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's quite interesting. So there's a 70%. Um, sorry, seventy-five percent conversion rate of penalty free kicks. So one in four are saved or missed. So he's done just a little bit above average. It should just, just above the bare that, minimum. Is that what you're saying? It would just it's just a bit better than um, the most players, and it's it's fine. But it just doesn't it doesn't change anything. Like David Raya is a, an excellent goalkeeper. These penalty <laughs> saves make make no difference at all. I guess it's just a moment, isn't it? So like a, yeah. a line in the sand. So oh, I understand. I understand why people are bothered about it. And it's his moment to give him some flowers, isn't it? I think he has got. He has been getting better as he's getting more settled in there. Uh, right back. So we've got Trent. We've got Ben White. And we've got Kyle Walker. Trent, oh. shot-creating actions, 5.49. So shot-creating actions for all three in order. In- this is interesting, right? 5.49. Then it's 2.28 and 2.31. So, yeah, but we know why that is because he's not playing as a right back. Because well, Trent's a joke, right, as well. Yeah. But then tackle success rate, which is what, what we always talk about with Trent. His is 29.9%. Ben White's is 48.4. And Walker's is 46.9. So, like, massive drop-offs either way. So All who of that makes sense. I, I think in, in this combined 11, which probably would be the best side that we've ever seen in the Premier League, I think would be all right scoring goals, and that oh. Trent as an inverted fullback would mean wouldn't wouldn't we wouldn't have to rely on him in the amount of goals we scored. So I would go with. Are you so you're bothered about the are you bothered about the setup of the team? Are you? I'm just or is saying it just I'm the just best defense... in each position. Well, not I'd, let's not make this more complicated. But but the I would say I would go with Carl Walker. 
It's going to go Walker. But I think Trent Alexander Arnold at this stage is a, just a wonderful, wonderful footballer who you'd want in your team. It's just that the defensive actions of Carl Walker are perhaps more important in the team that is going to destroy everybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ben Bowman says, what's Ben White's XFT expected fake to add? Incredibly high. Incre- per 90, incredibly high. He's got lovely thighs. I did write thighs. Trent down first. He's got lovely thighs. Lovely smooth thighs, Ben White. Do you ever have a look at that? Um, no, I I, I've, I've Trent. The answer's Trent now. Carl's had his day. <laughs> The answer is Trent. Well, okay. Uh, well, I, I did write I've, Trent down first. So. Do you know what happens, I think, in life? Like, depending on the age, I was thinking about this as well in terms of the title race. Is like, that, that, are Arsenal still, are they just, are they still just a touch green? Has that banana not truly ripened? Because the, if you think of all the great Premier League teams, they've all got just like men everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Sort of 27, 28 mm. year old men. And I wonder. Uh, but with that in mind, the evolution of time, Walker's just getting a little bit older. I just want right. Trent. The answer's Trent for me. But you've got yeah. That's fine. You've gone for him. Uh, right, defenders. Oh, my God. Horrific. Right. Saliba. It's not horrific, though, because you can't, you, you, like I said, you can't get it right or wrong. You just got to have an opinion. So it's that's not true. horrific. It's a good position. Stones, gonna... Diaz. Hang on, hang on. Stones, Diaz, Saliba, Gabriel, Van, Virgil van Dijk, Canate. Who isn't it, Flav? Who isn't it, as we tease it's... it? Uh, who isn't it? Who's it definitely it's... not? It's not a kanji. It's, it's not, not a kanji. K- it's not Canate. It's not Canate. I Could agree. Be. Could be. It's not Gabriel, although I know Arsenal fans Yeah. Are... I know they're raving about him, and, and look, are... Ars- but I can't have two Arsenal in there, and I know one. You know, I can't have two of them. Saliba was uh, a bit shaky against Porto. Just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing it out there. Played a lot of games, Jim. Played a lot of games. I mean, he's he's awesome. Is there? Are we living in a world where Saliba, especially with Gabriel, right? Because if Gabriel is not, you know, not in this one, despite being really good. Does that mean, and that's unfair, if that's unfair, is that suggesting that Saliba is overrated somewhat? I don't think Saliba's overrated at all. I think that probably he gets the plaudits because he, Saliba was a part of the tr- massive transformation in Arsenal's defensive stability when he came back off loan. And that Gabriel was already there, so he's kind of, that. there's an over hangover of that era where they were less sound defensively but them together have been sensational but you saw at the tail end last season when Saliba was he got his injury that Arsenal imploded and Gabriel was a part of that side if I remember rightly so I, I if, if you're asking me to pick one and it can only be one start uh, well it's Saliba so you go Saliba Saliba over Gabriel yeah interesting oh out of those two out of those two right yeah, yeah. but yeah, that doesn't that doesn't mean they're in that doesn't mean they're in so okay who who's definitely of the two who who when you're making when you go go right well he has to be in who has to be in for you and then where is the debate i think saliba is number one has to be in there see he's not you're not in your even in your two this this season i'm not gonna fight to that's debate flavis debate making a podcast everyone's look look at the engagement on the chat everyone's having fun i'm I'm not i'm not gonna I'm not going to be the guy that backs and fights for Saliba. I'm just saying that. If you don't want him, I'm happily chuck him out. Well, it's your, you've got your team and I've got my team. For me, and when, I do, when I've done this, because you look, like, someone's like, Trent can go inverted, Stones can step into midfield, those different movements of the like tactics. I'm like, I'm just picking the best team in a 4 you haven't even made You haven't even made a suggestion yet. In a 4 3 3. Yeah, 4 3 3. That's what I've got. So in terms of the best, the guarantee for me, especially after this season, is VVD. Virgil van Dijk yeah. has to be in 13. Has to be. Has yeah, to be. Has yeah. to be. Yeah. So the yeah, debate yeah. for me that I'm having, and I think Diaz has been actually quite average this year, if I'm honest. And actually at the start of the year, I did. I went on SDS and they went, do your top five. And I had Diaz above van Dijk because I thought van Dijk was sort of kind of still slipping and obviously it was these were amazing players but Van Dyke's absolutely proved me wrong um 
and he's back. So for me, it's between Stones and Saliba. I think Stones is... I don't think Saliba could do Stones' role. I think Stones could do could go into that Arsenal team and do what do what he does, I think. Maybe not to exactly the same level, but I think overall Stones is just about better. Different, aren't they? They're different. I mean, can you, you? So you're suggesting that there is an Arsenal centre back, or even an Arsenal defender. We haven't got to do left back yet in the team that has the best defence in the league. I think part of that defensive brilliance is the whole team. I think they press really well. I think they're super well organised out of possession. I think that's a big part of it in terms of even getting it down that down that end of the pitch. But I look, I think it's one of those where like Saliba's going to get better and better and better and better. And could could surpass Stones, could. And maybe okay. uh, defensively is a touch better. But uh, I'm okay with Van Stones Van... and Virgil van Dijk, if I'm honest. Fine, fine. Yeah, Arsenal fans get annoyed about that. Faux oh, show, sure. but it's my team. Right, DM. So we've got... What about left back? Oh, left back. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Left back, we've got uh, Robertson, Zinchenko or Ake. Tommy Yasu, if you're trying to be clever. Uh, I would say... Um, Guardiola, I guess you could chuck in there as well, maybe. As well. That's a lot of money for a player who's just not... He just hasn't had a... What's happened with Guardiola? I think it's that first season Man City Syndrome thing, where he's like... This is why financial players play so ready. He's not ready. This is why financial fair play is so important and the increase in the revenue is frustrating because... Man City can't keep making that mistake if the financial fair play rules are, are, are um, f- you know, have teeth. Mm. You shouldn't be, there, there should be no world where 100 million pound Jack Grealish is, and, and 80 million pound Guardiola just sit on the bench because they're not ready. But I, I think the thing with Man City is that Which, if you think of the players that they've bought, they're not buying lots all the time. Like if you get it right and they're there for 10 years, then you just buy one. You buy one. You buy one. Right. No, no, no. And they have done that really well and they are managing their finances. Don't get me wrong. Now. But but the fact that Guardiol that they can just go, yeah, no, he's not ready. He spent eighty million pounds on him. Everywhere else it'd be the worst signing of the season. Flop. Flop. We paid eighty million pounds, he's played ten games or whatever it might yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Or, it's but so Man true. City or, or Grealish, worst hundred million pound you you could possibly spend. Because but because Pep Guardiola goes you know, this, you know, he needs to work harder. It's not a flop. He's just not doing what exactly what Pep, Pep says. No one else gets that grace. By yeah, the way. he's got lucky there. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Anyway, Pe- um... sorry, people in the chat talking about Joe Gomez. Right, the jo- this Joe Gomez. Right, people. I was talking about England yesterday. Liverpool. This is a bit like, and Catherine, will be, you'll be delighted to hear this. Liverpool fans, all of you, all of you, and I know, and, I, and I'm, this is dangerous to what I'm doing, but I don't care. All of you said he was trash. All of you wanted him out the door. All of you thought he was he was crap. You all thought it. And, and I'm sure like the chat's going to come alive here. You all thought it, right? And he wasn't that bad. He just hadn't been playing enough and he was struggling with his confidence a little bit, right? He is now playing far far better. He's he's of use. He's great. He's doing well. But he is now not Roberto Carlos. And he's not Trent and he's none of those players either. He's a solid player who does a diligent job, who's all right defensively, who's just about okay on the ball. He's good. He's great. He's solid. He's not this like outrageously good player now. Okay. He's not better than Chilwell. He's not better than Luke Shaw, Joe Gomez. He's not better than Luke Shaw. And in this combined 11, he's not better than Robertson. He's just unfortunate at the moment. Or Ake. Well, probably he's in check. It's in check, definitely. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not well, trying to well, dig well. him out. I'm not trying to dig out Joe Gomez. Any... He's great, but like, he's a, he's Ben Davies. He's Ben Davies. He's a good player who's great for the squad. You can play him in different positions, but stop saying that he's like the next coming of Christ. He's not. <laughs> yeah, no one's keeping Joe Gomez if you have the option of have if Andy Robertson is fit or if if Ake you had the option to sign Ake. Joe Gomez doesn't come into the question. Let's just pick Ake then. We know it's him. Oh, I think it's Robbo. I'd say that's an out and out left back. I'd pick really. Robert. Yeah, I think I just think he's unfortunate that the the way football is at the moment, people don't want a left back at left back. He's still the best left back, in my opinion. 
But you've gone with that. Okay, that's fine. Well, we can go with Robinson. No, no. Again, again, it's your it's your team and it's my team. All uh, right, we're not trying to do a combined combined eleven. <laughs> no, no, no. A singular combined eleven. Right. Um, you went Saliba, didn't you? Let me just jot this down. You went with I got Trent Van Dyke. L- lots of difference here. Yeah. We've only got um, one similar, well, two similarities. Oh, uh, DM. Oh, we've got Endo, Declan Rice, Rodri. Unless you want to put Declan Rice as a centre midfielder. I don't want to put Rice anywhere, but if I'm forced to in this, you've got to have Rodri and Rice in the team. I agree. So, Rodri's the probably, probably the best six in the world, maybe. Yeah. Um, And you can't not have Declan Rice in there. So, that would be my first two picks. I agree. So, I don't want to in could. Could walk in. Not people, really. are, people talk about people are gonna say, Yo, yeah, Endo's been great. He has been great. He's not Rodri. Come on. It Go doesn't on. matter whether he's been great. All yeah, right, yeah, well, give yeah. him his recognition. He has been great. Would you have him over Rodri? No, then this discussion finished. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't I I, I know I'm I know I'm getting a bit aggressive here, but if you don't have a calm decision, fuck off to Twitter. <laughs> right? This is a different place. Okay. Yep. So uh, we both agree with Rodri and Rice. Roger and Rice uh, in attacking midfield then. Lots of options. Okay. So the third spot. I'm going to chuck all these names out there. McAllister, Havertz, Bernardo Silva, Sabojlai, Odegaard, KDB. Foden, if you want to, if you want to put him in as a midfielder. I've I got mine in. Um I don't know. Yeah. Only one, but but this is where it gets horrible. There's there's someone's got to miss out. Obviously, <laughs> that's the whole point. Is there a world where you drop Rod Rice and have Foden in midfield? I get that could be your world. Yeah, that could be your but world. That's not a world you're willing to live in, though. I don't think that's a fair world. I, I was thinking about it the other day. I think Declan Rice should probably be the player of this this season this year. If you know, if he carries on with what he's been doing, I think it's been. I think he's been unbelievable. I think he's so important, and I think he's. I think he's going to affect some really big games as the season continues, and I think he's taking the the, the team forward. Um. So I think Rice has yeah. to be in there. I think with Foden, yeah. he's he's gorgeous. Like he's just so fun to watch. He's absolutely electric. Um. But in this midfield, the answer's KDB for me. Like. It has to be. That's what, I've got. That's what I've got written down. The thing we, right, obviously Foden like killed it in the Manchester derby. And so understandably, everyone's going to talk about it. And, and Guardiola, you know, plays his little games. It goes, I think he's the best player in the Prem, which allows everyone to have that conversation for the whole week. Um, he, and and he let's, is. You think he's the best player in the Prem? Currently. Currently, yeah. Or in form, yeah. He's unreal. It, I mean, he didn't, didn't do much last week. What you? Oh right, sorry. Some again, one, one ninety know. minutes. Rule him out. Shit. I just slowed down. Alcott, slow Foden down. is shit. KDB has been. I think between now and the end of the season, I expect KDB to make more assists, win more games. People, and he will make his way back to the, the top of the mountain. I would guess he has been their best player this season. I don't think he's been the best player in the Premier League this season. Like his his stats are fine. Like they're not outrageous. All um, right, De Bruyne. So I would go De Bruyne. But I need to get Foden in here somewhere. Put, well, you could put Foden in the front three. Well, okay. The left-hand side's a problem. So on the right-hand side, well, actually, right-hand side and left-hand side. In the middle, Haaland, right? Yeah. Easy. So, you, know, we love, you know, Darwin, Darwin Nunez. It's great fun. But he's not in this team. So on the right, we've got Salah and Saka. Now, on Saturday Social, cheated a little bit and they put Saka on the left-hand side. I don't think we should allow that. I think you need to pick no, one. No, that is, that is cheating. He's never, he's never played that. He put Salah on the right-hand side. You mean? Saka they on the Sa- other side. They put Saka, sorry, on the left-hand side. Yeah. What? He plays on, oh, he plays on the right. Yeah, yeah. So, no, you're right. You're right. Sorry, my bad, my bad. I'm looking at it like this. Right. Oli Sage. Right. Oli Sage. This seems like a very one-sided team here. No. That's not that's not true. He's got his own eleven, and I've got my own eleven. Okay, listen. Yeah, listen. Independent of each other. Sage. 
Is, it, is, is this because he just wants, as a Liverpool fan, wants to see more Liverpool players in there? Yeah, is that I mean, what, you what are. the problem is? Yeah. you got Van Dijk, what are you worried about? Yeah, You've got I've a goalkeeper. Got, I've got three Liverpool, four Liverpool. It's about to be five. Salah right. in ahead of Saka for me. Yes. Thought about it. Did think about it. I joined late. Right. Wow. I don't know. Yeah, it's not much between them, which just shows you how good fucking you know, Saka is. All right. I'm going to go Salah on the right as well. Okay. Harlan on the middle. And... This is the problem. This is really difficult. So, Foden has played one or two games on the left-hand side. <laughs> so, if we want to do that and cram him in there, the options on the left-hand side are... Doku. No. Martinelli. Jota. Alvarez, because he played there last week. I'll, I'll leave it to the chat. Is Foden up for discussion on the left-hand side? Yes or no? I think Bob, if you're going to be really strict with the Saka not being able to play on the other wing, then can you just chuck Foden in there because you want him in? Because that's kind of the same principle, isn't it? Oh, my God! What are you talking about? Yeah, They're saying yes. Good They're saying yes. Saying yes. Saying yes. I actually, would, I wish Guardiola would use him on the left a bit more. I thought he should have done that last week. I didn't yeah. really get it. Make this a lot easier, wouldn't it? Played there a lot last season. Well, so look, lots of yeses there. There we go. Happy days. All right, we're going to go there. Foden. <laughs> Brilliant. Foden, result. Uh, ooh. Well, Foden or Martinelli then? Foden. If you have Foden. the choice out of yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, um, In terms of... Hang on. So how many Arsenal have you got in there? How many One, Arsenal? One, two, three. I've got three. All right, so my team is Alison Walker, Van Dyke, Saliba, Ake, Rodri, Rice, De Bruyne, Salah, Haaland and Foden. My team is Allison, Trent, Stones, Virgil Van Dyke, Robbo, Rodri, KDB, Rice, Salah, Haaland, and Foden. So I've got, I've only got one Arsenal player. Oh dear. Yeah, that well, Jim. It's going to go down well. Can you do a graphic and share it on socials? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe leave that then. Actually, whoops. Um, well, there you have it. I enjoyed that. That was all right. No? Did we enjoy that? Yeah, it's all right. enjoy it's, that? It's, it's fine in these instances. It's, it's the, uh, fine. It's do, you know what I, say it's... do you know what I found interesting? Um... Who's the manager? Casey just says, who is the manager? That's good. Oh. Oh. oh Gary no. Neville. Is it the docu penalty when he sees it the second time? Oh, no. Oh, I think he's going to give him that one. <laughs> um... <laughs> I would say probably go Klopp. <laughs> Luke says Flav is dead inside right now. It's all right. It's okay. Uh, are you giving it to Pep? Pep, isn't it? Pep, you're giving it to Pep. Klopp. Who's been the best manager this season? Oh, so, so, uh, last was last top, aren't they? You've got best goal difference, best, most goals scored, least least conceded. And they're top of the league. Well, it's not a conversation, is it? I think Arsenal, I think Arteta's yeah. coached the best. This year, you ca- you cannot you cannot. Well, the clock's the, done. You cannot ta- Sorry, you cannot take so much. You can't look at statistics and spend so much time with them, and then not put everything into the league table as it stands right now. I know it's not XG. I know it's not pre pre assists. I know that all these sort of tangibles are intangibles that you can apply to anything that your agenda suits. Not you, you, not you, Jim. I was also talking about generally. Yeah. The league table says who scored the most goals, who's conceded at least, who has the most points at this stage, and Arsenal win on all three. So therefore, it has to be Arteta. Based on this season, Arteta is the manager of this team. I, I think, like, it, especially in those big games as well, in terms of finding a way, I've been so impressed with him. I think w- what Klopp's done, or what Klopp has at his disposal, is just great. So many different profiles that are all like bought in. And so he's able to change it up. So he's got so much more to use than Arsenal have in terms of like attacking options to change the game, I think. And so for Arteta to do what he's done is pretty bloody impressive. Um, I feel like you're going to win the Legion. I think, you know, I do think that Porto, I thought the Pens was a, it was a moment. I do think that. I think it's going to go with the last day. I really do. I think they're going to win it. 
I don't know how much of it's my, you know, my trepidation that's not. talking yet. Answer, I'm going to do um, I'm going to do a, a video like breaking down it all. So I, I'm not going to give my final answer on it. But I, th- I do think where I was with Arsenal, I was. Arsenal are starting. Yeah, they are starting to convince me a little bit. Uh, can we talk about Spurs affecting the title race? Yeah. So you've got to play all three of them. them. Yeah. Oh, you'll play them, but will you win? In terms of those three games, well, first of all, how's it going at Tottenham? Apart from Ange just being a delight again. I saw. It's, it's, I mean, it's it's um it's mental. You win two games on the bounce, and you, the entire narrative around your football club changes. Like from from a Spurs fan, you and, and I guess everybody, no, this is always going to be the way because not all pundits and not all you know, journalists and writers of your football club are they're, they're not as invested as, as a fan is in, in their respective clubs. Mm. So they they do to some degree have to have to ride ride the wave of results, but they don't tell you everything. Um, we we as Spurs fans understood that there was. There were, there was a there was a process of going, ongoing. That the the injuries had a massive impact mid season, and the victories we were getting at home weren't well. You know, they obviously they counted, but the performances weren't as good as they were at the start of the season because very good managers figured out actually this is the best way to play against Postecoglou team, which is kind of what Villa tried to do, which is the low block counter. Um. But yeah, we win two games, have that amazing second half against uh, against Aston Villa, and people are saying, actually saying, uh, there was a conversation. Can, and they, no, they won't. But could they win the league? That was that was even on. Um, I think it was on Sky the other day. They were talking about it. Um, well, Flav, I mean, you've still got to play Man City, Liverpool, and Arsenal, which is yeah. which is nine points, isn't it? Well, you win that'll, them with a game to land. That'll help. Well, hang on a minute. That's <laughs> twelve points. So you've caught everyone up now. Now everyone's starting to get a little bit nervous, and all of a sudden, could they? Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, no, they can't. <laughs> but but uh, will, will we have an impact on on where the the title goes? Then you know, you obviously we're playing them all. If you said to me right now, look, it, it happened last season in that we lost to Arsenal and then beat City. If you remember correctly, mm. was it last season? They beat us at home, and then we managed to get a result against City, or maybe we drew. I can't remember. No, we beat them. We beat them one nil. So like, that's a nightmare situation that we we lose to Arsenal and beat Liverpool, and Manchester, Manchester City. But we've got our own shit going on. We want to finish in the Champions League. You certainly want to finish at least fifth because that might guarantee Champions League football. So um, fourth, fourth is obviously there for you now. With everything you know, being Villa. Yeah, I thought I thought I, Villa would do it at the weekend, so I was, I was surprised. It just shows how much you know, doesn't it? Um, Liverpool. <laughs> uh, Ollie Sex says Liverpool will beat Spurs at home, mate. We've been, we've won there once in your lifetime. That's not a statement you need to make. <laughs> Obviously, going to Anfield as a Spurs fan is is likely to be very very difficult. That's the one, but at home, it's it's much more much more significant. Arsenal, despite beating us last year, have found it difficult to win at White Hart Lane. Uh, Manchester City the same. Even the one nil win they had in the in the in the FA Cup this season wasn't as convincing as you you might expect a Manchester City win to be. Um, it depends on whether or not that performance against Villa in that second half specifically, but even the first half, if that is what we are and where we are at right now, and it wasn't just a peak in performance and form. Um, a lot went into it, of course. Like Ten and, men as well. I was going to say is the uh, is the red card has a huge impact on that. It's a lot easier to play against ten men who were trying <laughs> who were trying to um, trying to get something from the game makes spaces much more easier. Um, but I've seen enough this season in Spurs to uh, to to have a massive impact, and I think we will get results against one of those teams. Come on, we'll get re- we'll get a result against one of those teams, and I think I think we'll I think we'll beat Arsenal at home. Because, I mean, yeah, get your bogeys out. Um, Arsenal and Man City, like I said, that is, that's not easy. N- neither of them like playing against you. Um, and uh, look, out of those three, in terms of sort of style of play and the first game against each of them, which, which team sort of w- were a bit too much? You know, how, how do you... 
how do you find your chances against those basically on you know on a performance level as, as opposed to like being at Anfield yeah and it being a right or left? It's, it's, I mean, in terms of the most difficult game, it's definitely Liverpool away because of Anfield and, and all the shit that goes on there and the Klopp and stuff. Mm. Um, in terms of the style of play, all of them suit Spurs. Like, if, you wanna, if, if you're going to look to three games of football for a neutral, and I thought, I thought Villa can do this as well because of, you know, but they didn't, they decided to go five at the back. But there's no way that Arteta is going to renege on, his, on what's been so successful, successful this season. Nor will Pep and nor will Klopp. So I'm not saying I will have to that that Spurs have a an, a great chance of winning those games, but in in seeing the best parts of Tottenham, the irony is that those teams will bring them out bring it out of them, because it's going to be open. There's going to be opportunities, maybe less so against Arsenal because they're so def- defensively sound. But um, yeah, I, I I think probably it's weird to say, but Man City at home is probably the most winnable. That's wild. So, he's that mad. Is, that it's crazy. Is, but then the, 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 North London, the, the, the North London derby is... And it's all in April, right? It's like this, There's three games on the bounce. The North London derby is... Um, it throws up some mental results. And like you say, and it's, it's a horrible cliche, but the form kind of does go out the window, right? So... I think... Um, yeah, you're right. I feel like just... The Spurs-Man City game... I wonder how rocking it will be, like because you're kind of wanting Man City to win that one in a weird way. But I guess you'll still be going for what you're no. going for, so people are chilled. It'll be fine. No, no, it, 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 it will, the atmosphere will be good, and it won't be regardless of what what Arsenal are doing. No one's going to sit there thinking, "I want to lose this game." It's kind of them when, like, if we do, oh well. But yeah, you, you're going to want to win, and then oh, you'll play. Yeah, absolutely. I will play. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Twentieth of April. 27th of April, 4th of May. Bang, 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 bang. We're going to be talking about Spurs a lot. I think they will be, Oli. I think they will. He's just saying, I can't believe they're not on UK TV. All of those will probably be moved, right? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You'd you'd imagine. Oh, no. That's going to be on my birthday. Uh, That's annoying. Do you know what we talked about with that Villa and Spurs game? was like, uh, it was a bit like, you know, you might, some of us might frequent some uh, adult websites, porn. Websites. Right. Thanks for clearing it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's like the ones where, you know, for some reason, the, the, the lady is inexplicably stuck in a washing machine. <laughs> I was or not aware un- of that niche. I, I actually was not aware or, of that. Niche. Or under, under a bed or something. <laughs> right. What? Sorry, and, where are uh, you going with this? And Villa, a Villa, a Villa fan, a Villa, Villa, Villa's football game, I'm stuck in the washing machine. Help me, help me. And... <laughs> And Spurs have just walked up and went, mm, no, but I don't think I will help you. Not in the way you think anyway. Uh, quick question for Gaffron in the chat. Out of uh, you having to play all three of them, what do you believe uh, is, the, is the point, you know, the games that you'll get the points in? Let's have a quick look at Villa. Cause, and, and are you... Are you tensing up a bit? Are the injuries starting to hurt you? Is Douglas Ruiz playing a little bit deeper than you want him to? I, I I want Villa to I want Villa to get in the Champions League because I had, I got a bit annoyed I've been a bit annoyed this week with everyone going oh, th-. everyone's going that's what you want in it the Champions League you just want the big teams in the top it's like what the fuck are we like get your head out your ass like everyone's everyone's sleepwalking to a Super League it's different it's a different podcast at a different time so I would love to see Villa get in the Champions League by hook or by crook um but you've got to play Man City on the third of April it looks. Isn't the coefficient looking quite favourable to English clubs now? Again? With Arsenal doing yeah, well, yeah. I think it helps them. But like, again, oh, hooray, hooray, the fifth team gets in the Champions League. And I get it from like, you know, Catherine's point of view or your point of view. But broadly, that's a joke. That's stupid. Champions League, you've got fifth getting into the Champions League. Well, I, what, what is this competition? It's a nonsense. Well, we'll talk, talk, talk to UEFA. Don't blame fucking, don't blame little old Tottenham. Uh, but you shouldn't want it. You shouldn't want it. You should want fourth and fourth only so you'd get in there on real valid reasons instead of, uh, it's, uh, it's a form of doping. It's a league doping t- that's going on here. Take so it's not it. actually we'll a it. real achievement. Bloody UEFA, you wouldn't get your UEFA back in the day. Anyway. Take it though. Liverpool's second to last game for Villa. Woo! Ooh. Catherine doesn't care. Thank you, Catherine. Thanks for that. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Well, I guess we'll, guess we'll move on. 
Um, also got Chelsea in there as well. Tough run for Villa. Look at that. Brighton, Palace. Don't worry about that. Bournemouth. Bournemouth, who, who will not be stopped. Luton, that was another one in my uh, the WhatsApp groups. It was like, I just, and and that's why I always bet Luton, you know? I always thought Luton had a chance because it's not a bad. Oh, uh, what's the score? Oh, sorry. They were free, I thought they were free to up. <laughs> Four free. Boo. Everyone on Twitter, and that's what they're the, and that's why I always believe because oh, people don't see the game the way. Oh, let him fall. Wait, <laughs> poor old, poor old Luton. I work. It is one of those ones that as soon as they lose that, you go, oh, oh. yeah. Um, last week I asked you. Um, uh, there were a couple of times where I wasn't listening, which seemed to be sort of controversial moment in the podcast that then uh, seemed to wind people up a little bit. Um, one was when you were talking about Trent um, and the, obviously the 4-0 against Barcelona and I, it sounded like I didn't couldn't remember that game, which was... Um, just didn't, what what happened is like. you start reading the, the, the... You'll start reading the comments and then I can tell you've gone and I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, so I don't, I missed that bit. So sorry. And the other bit that some, S Winter got it right. I don't remember hearing this, but apparently you said it. Is it true they've won eight of the last seven titles, Man City? Jim, not listening. Yeah, yeah that sounds that. about right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So no, what, what? How many have they won? Five. How many? <sighs> how many have Man City won? They've won. I don't know. I don't care. Loads. All of them. They've won four of the last five. I think they have to because Liverpool are the only guys that won otherwise, and they probably won a few before that. I should know it, but I don't. But it's certainly, what you haven't won eight, nine, you haven't won eight at the last seven. Nine league titles in their history, right? All in the last five years. Wow. Uh, Ollie Sage said, uh, "The reason people think Liverpool have to win this game is because history tells us City won't drop many, if any, points the rest of the season." He's called it now. So if Liverpool want that belief and energy for the rest of the season, they have to win it for themselves or anyone else. They didn't win it, Wally. So is that it then? It's over. Let us know. Uh, S. Winter, again, said, Jim, you are so wrong. City don't drop points at this stage of the season. They never have. They never have. I mean, they have. Uh, music nerd Jim clearly is going with this Liverpool take for the season but I don't think you can dismiss Arsenal's form yes they are the lesser sides side sorry but we are slapping teams with these you can never get praise for beating the teams that you should but still I agree that this Liverpool City game doesn't decide the league really I think Arsenal versus City is the real one purely because the result means more to each team this means more to Man City and Arsenal all of a sudden incredible uh, and Gurge um, says, if Arsenal win the league, James will have to admit that they're the best team that's ever existed, seeing as it never even entered his mind as a possibility when coming up against teams he makes sound absolutely unsurpassable. He's blinded by this tired narrative of they've done it before when it comes to City and Liverpool. Mm. There was once a time they hadn't done it before in the not too distant past. So why is it so unthinkable that Arsenal could? If they topple both of these teams, <laughs> if they topple both of these teams that James sees as clear favourites, not so bad, who he clearly has a lot of respect and admiration for, mostly Liverpool and Klopp, what does that make Arsenal? It would make them Premier League champions. Okay. I just thought it was important to hear both sides of the comments. All right. So that's so important thing is we all know nothing. Uh, this is really interesting. So remember last week we had the point system. Yeah. So there was a point system for cups. Uh, so there was this idea that a league or a Champions League is five points. A Europa League is three points. An FA Cup is two points. And a League Cup is one point. And I then said, could someone sort that out for me? And let's have a look and find out who is the best Premier League manager uh, of all time. Now, we've not got other domestic leagues in this list. But it is pretty interesting. Hopefully you can see it. Can I zoom in? I can't seem to zoom in. That's a shame. Uh, hang on, let me try. Oh, we can. Okay, there we go. So you'll see it on the stream in a second, Flav. No. What? Oh, it'll come up. Have you got the Have you got the stream with you? I've got the YouTube video. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It'll come up in a second. All right. Okay. Actually, I'll just give it to you. Here we go. Bosh. 
So what? It's quite interesting my list. I mean, this is a bit of a random list that um, was done for us. Massive thank you uh, to I think it was Devil's Fire. I might be getting that wrong. Forgive me. Uh, um, but according to this, and Champions League really helping him, benefiting Carlo Ancelotti. Carlo Ancelotti is currently a better manager than Jurgen Klopp. Do you agree with that? Um, no. I, 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 maybe there's a recency bias, and maybe I'm incorrect, but I wouldn't agree with that. Carlo uh, Ancelotti has not a score of, he's got a t- score of 27. Um, so and what's the, that based on? The old four Champions Leagues gets him 20 points. He's got himself a yeah, Premier well, League, would, five points for that. That is quite good, isn't it? Four, isn't it? That will help, most yeah. Of a dream of. Two points for an FA Cup. It's stuck in there as well. Uh, Jürgen Klopp currently with just a measly 14 points. Um, really being undone by uh, the FA Cups. And, uh, and the, you know, the Community Shield not really being anything. No points um, for him at all. Uh, Arsene Wenger has 29 points. Jose Mourinho has 37 points. Pep Guardiola has 48 points. But as much as Pep Guardiola has done, he has 48 points. Alex Ferguson has 89 points. So right, he's still clear, isn't he? Metri- well, there needs to be another metric. It's like pro rata. There, there needs to be a pro rata metric. Because he's had... Like, Alex Ferguson was... How long was he in the job? 20... How, how many years was he... Man- you know yeah, that's true. Job? Yeah, like... I don't know. felt like 25... Well, 1986. When did he go? To 2013. Loads of years. Oh, right, so so uh, yeah, I mean, he did at what point in his tenureship at at, at, at um, Man United did he reach forty eight points? But I love that though because that really does take the emotion away from it, but it doesn't take into account the, the magnitude of the the uh, the um, of the win, right? Because Klopp Guardiola had lots of advantages that Klopp didn't have, more money to spend. So is there additional value in yeah. how they won that title? But then consistently winning it over four years, if he does it this 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 time, I think that in th- itself is an incredible yeah. feat. The but thing without with Klopp, emotion, sorry, sorry, yeah. you go, you go. So without emotion, this is a good this is a good uh, good league table. So uh, it puts Klopp about fifth best, sixth. Yeah, uh, currently, yeah. Rafael Benitez just one point behind him. Dalglish just the four points behind him currently. Currently. Uh, I think the thing, f- the thing for me, obviously, yeah, like you say, this takes the emotion out of it. I think there's a tab missing for other other leagues, and I think that's an interesting one in terms of points per season. Is also a good one because I think obviously Pep, you would imagine, would destroy Fergie when it comes to that. Points for spend as well. If you're going to get to a point, you uh, get, get to something like points per spend, net spend. The, the I think that that's the thing with Klopp for me that will always make this a good, solid conversation is where he took Liverpool from to the consistency of where they went is that's, that's the difference. Like Man City were always up there, had been up there for several seasons. I'm going to stop streaming this thing for a second. Um, and Klopp wasn't. And that's the bloody difference. Um, but points, what, you know, if we, if it's all about trophies, then that's, that's that. Fergie's still numero uno. Uh, we'll finish off with... Oh, we were going to talk about Eddie Howe. Do you want any, any thoughts on that, just quickly? I, I think his his time is limited. Um, Will he make August? No, I don't. I mean, I, I don't. I don't think so. I think that they're going to be moving towards. I, I'm, it, look, he's he's gone backwards this year. I know there's injuries, and know there are mitigating circumstances, and there are reasons. All of those things are the same essentially. But uh, to be tenth. At this stage, nowhere near Champions League football, having finished, was it third they finished? Is that right? I can't remember, fourth. Um, that's that's a massive step backwards, huge step backwards. So it's probably time to try something else. What do you think? Do you think you'd be given another season? <sighs> so Jonathan Cowan says it's pretty much been confirmed by the board that he'll be in charge next season. By the way, if you want to become okay. a patron, there's a link in the description. Join us for mailbags and obviously the live podcast every week. Uh, yeah, so apparently that's the case. I... I think it's harsh. I, I I still think it's harsh. I think obviously it's clearly petered out this year. I think the I guess the thing is, do you want to do you want to roll the dice and give someone a whole preseason, um, and that and that you know I guess that initial spurt of energy that you get at the start of a season, 
Or do you roll the dice with Eddie Howe in the sense of giving him preseason, let people get fit. Obviously, the, the players know him. And if the players still bought into him, give them that chance with the best team that they've got. They're, I think the confidence level of a lot of the players there, like Sven Botman and Shah have been awful recently. Like mm. they, I think there's something in the situation and the grind of the season getting to them. That's why I said that at the start of the year, and I thought that may come to be not not as bad as this. Uh, if, if they've had to rely on a seventeen-year-old for major parts of the important aspect for important parts of this season, and that's that, that's pretty much unprecedented for a team that you know as, as big as Newcastle have to. And not to say that he hasn't done well; he's done incredibly well. But that they they are the, 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 in, there have been a lot of injury crisis in the league this year but Newcastle's probably or among the worst if it was me i always say this phrase like you've got to back the man or you've got to kind of back yourself right and say mm. like with ainsworth like i wanted to back the man and but you like at some point you're like no 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 this isn't this is nowhere near good enough Eddie Howe, was, I, I think you can back the man here. I would like to see him given that opportunity. And I think if you get to October and it's not great, then you no go, change. look, at, look, Eddie, I've given you a chance here. Um, mm. Because you, really the decisions look, you're making in terms of players that you're bringing in and stuff like that, that shouldn't even really be defined by Eddie Howe. It should be defined by the sporting director, whoever that new person will be. So it, it the, the head coach should be a lot more um, kind of replaceable and therefore with that same thing in mind, if, if, if they've been unlucky, which I think is really interesting thing that they talk about at Brentford. I can't remember his name now, but they would say at the end of a season, they'll have a conversation and they'll go, okay, what you finished 14th. Do you think you were the 14th best team in the league? Cause a lot of these metrics are, and sort of the bad luck, say let's talk about Brentford, the bad luck that they've had in terms of their injuries would suggest that, do you know what? We finished 16th, but we've had all these problems. I think actually we've got a squad that's capable of being 15th, but we can see there that we were unlucky in these games. We can see that Rico Henry, Ethan Pinnock, Ivan Tony, numerous players have not been available for large parts of the season. So let's not be stupid here. You're, you're a good manager who understands the club and the players are bought into you. Let's stick with you. So I think you can transfer that across to, to Newcastle. Um, you might be right yeah. there, Jim. I think you've you've convinced me. Also, you've got Jonathan Cowan in the in the uh, um, comments, who's clearly a Newcastle fan, and he's well behind him. He says my rattle rat, ability on the, on this topic is high. It's the second mm. year of the takeover. I can't do this anymore. He has so much credit in the bank. The dressing room uh, are obviously behind him. It's, it's blatantly obvious to him. So look, I mean, if he says it, then fucking look. I really don't give a shit what happens at Newcastle. But if you're telling me that that is the case, then maybe you're right. And what you all, all the points you just made there, Jim, make make, make complete sense. It's it's always the easiest thing to get rid of a manager. One bad season doesn't ne- well, say bad season ten um, doesn't necessarily define how good a manager is or, or or his abilities to make that club successful. And like I said, there's had so many injury problems and, and players dropping off and Trippier's form has dropped off a cliff to some degree. So, all right, yeah, let's just give him another go. What's the I, alternative? Bringing Antonio Conte? That's going to last 18 months and you're going to be in hell again. Well, that's it. And I, I think you, I think that can be, it can be a really powerful move in the sense that, you, like, say Arteta, Arteta got backing. So the players then go, oh, well, he's sticking around. Well, better get my arse in gear. And, yeah. and, it, and it comes. And... I think that's that's what I would I would like to say because I uh, see because I believe that Eddie Howe is a really really good manager and I think most people will have seen that and said that um, so to not believe it now seems a bit wildly short sighted like just like what you know this season is this season like say, put it to you say Pastor Coglu right all that is injuries hit like they did um, you know Sun missing. Uh, Saar missing, all those things, right? For, for yeah, tournaments. Yeah. 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 Say that had happened and you'd fallen off a cliff a bit and you're in 10th right now. Would you... Yeah. Would you... No, still no I wouldn't. Yeah, of course. I would look to... I'd look to the positives and look that there's a clear... It's clear that we're moving in the right direction, but these outside... These the, these forces of out, outside of his control have impacted how effective we've been on the pitch, but you can see what's happening, right? That's... Yeah. It's the same with... When Arteta finished uh, eighth in his first full season, they could see the progress. So there you back it. Whereas uh, the difference between that and, say, Ten Hag is 
it's difficult to see where the progress is being made. So that's two can, do you know what I mean? So it's it, the position really doesn't matter. It's can you see development? Can you see a plan? And is yeah. it going ahead? And if it is, then you, you state well, what, what's, what's I think the point? That, so I, I'm contradicting myself, but I think. But I think, I was, still, I I think that's interesting because the there's both sides on it, right? So like say with Eddie Howe, right? I actually think, and I think it's a similar thing with um, say someone like Gareth Southgate in the sense that his, um, they're introverted. I think they're quite introverted people kind of outwardly to the media. They're quite sort of not timid, but like there's this little touch of shyness maybe to them, right? And so with that, I think that that will infuriate the fans that don't connect with you quicker and, and, and more aggressively because they sort of don't bite back. But overall, I think it can save you because you don't, you don't kind of um, crucify yourself by saying something stupid. And, and I think that's the thing with Eddie Howe uh that uh that could could save him a little bit but i think he's also going to maybe make it gently become more and more divisive when it comes to newcastle and sorry newcastle fans that want him out and newcastle fans that want him in uh agreed agreed we've done one hour 20 i'm just going to literally run through then one week bands right. um and then we'll we'll be on our way uh quads and power moves there were some disgusting ones uh we spoke about it last week and got um got affected by uh, loss of revenue um, due to talking about a some uh, some that's what I'm going to talk about and talking about um, anyway we asked for a power move in a and Salvation said uh, power play in the way what, what, what what's happening <laughs> you're right I, I got I got demonetized for the pod because we started talking about yeah how do you know specifically that I mean, it wasn't anything else. <laughs> Had to be that. Okay. All right. So I appreciate that. Uh, that was um, my door for anyone's concern. Uh, it's not yours. Um, but anyway, power play in the way. Um, yeah. You say to um, <laughs> you say to someone, and this is the only one I could actually pop in there. Actually, there's two. So one, Fev says, um, slapping the other bloke's bum. I think it's a good shout. It's a bit of good, clean fun there. <laughs> um, the one that just blew my mind, which I, I give... Give the other guy's member a little stroke just so he knows you're the dominant male in the situation. Right. Okay. And he would, with eye contact, importantly, he said, not sure about that one. Yeah, um, I think that's just like, that's something else. That's can, something different. Entirely, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And, Which um, is fine. Um, fine. said, uh, say, say to one of the other ones, you can take the back door. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say it. <laughs> you can take the back door, champ. Mine won't fit. <laughs> <laughs> Very yeah, good. That was too funny not to say. All right, quick fire one week bands. Here we go. Uh, Andy Ca uh, Castle, AJ3. So Steve McManaman pronouncing 99% of sentences in a Scouse accent and then the final word like the Queen. <laughs> I haven't noticed that. Yeah, you will now. Oh, I noticed it straight after. It's like that is mm. very, it's, it's impressive. Uh, Gaz is sick of the word aura. Um, Harlan's cousin said, referees, let's try a game week with no referees like we used to do it in the schoolyard. Home team captain brings a ball and has the final say on what's what. But of course, has to stay fair the way it's supposed to be played before this VAR ball. Very good. Yeah. Will King, uh, when people bring up talent ID when speaking about tr a transfer or a player. Yeah. That is what's that mean? I don't, I don't know. know what I mean. I'm just really happy with the talent ID that we've got here at the club right now. Uh, Chris said, any sentence with all four of these words in any order? Title, heat and race up. Champion, the champion, football manager has a lot, a lot that it needs to be accountable for. You know, you play a couple of seasons playing championship manager and then you're like a fucking expert about fucking everything. Talking about things that you don't have to prove. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On Twitter in particular. And, it's like everyone's like, yeah. everyone's turned into pep. It's like, have an opinion. Like, I get it. But this sort of like, well, actually, this, it's like, it's just heavy, man. It's like, just slow down. You know, but, you, but the problem is when you realize that everybody is doing it, when you're doing it, it doesn't have any impact. Yeah. Like, what, what, do you know what? Do you know part of the reason? I've got a question to yeah. finish on here that someone said to me, and I think it's really interesting. I'd love to hear your take on it. You just say, well, say what you want to say, and then we'll finish on that. Go on. Well, I just think part of the reason why Gary, Gary Neville became so popular so quickly is he talked about football like a normal human being as a pundit right at the beginning. I don't know what, he's, what he is now, but, but do you know what I mean? It was like, it was re refreshing 
And now there's experts everywhere, and mainly they're on Twitter or on podcasts. And it's just exhausting. I was like, oh, they've got this player, we bought him, and he's X, Y, and Z. And you're like, see, I've got to take your word for that. See, I think I, I know I'm aware I'm, do, I, I'm, I'm doing that, but I'm also, I think I'm of the understanding that like football makes hypocrites of us all. We all get it wrong all the time. And it's yeah. this sort of like, this oracle shit. <laughs> it's a little bit too yeah. much. It's got a little bit too much recently. Um, final question to you. Here we go. Someone said this to me on Twitter. F- forgive me, I can't remember who exactly it was, but great question. Would football be better? Like overall, like obviously there's not a blanket answer, but percentage wise, and let us know in the chat as well. Would football be better overall if we didn't have Twitter? Yeah. Hands down, without question. The world would be better without Twitter. Do you think? Yeah, it's a fucking cesspit. It shows the very worst elements of human beings. Has it, as much as that occurs all the time, has it also, yeah. does it also showcase other opinions? Do you Who know what I mean? That, Do you think the world needs more opinions, James? Do you think that's what it, we need I, less I, opinion? Well, I wonder if, like, say, say you're getting a bit like a bowling alley, right? So you've got the right yeah. wing and the left wing, okay? And, and I'm just Jim. I'm just Jim, right? And I'm, I'm like, that sounds like a good point, And that sounds like a good point. And I'm just getting banged around side by side. I'm hoping that at the end, you kind of get to a point where, like, you, you know, you're in the middle. You can on a podcast or you can in a conversation. You can in a pub. But Twitter, you cannot. It's not designed for that. When did you ever see, when, when do you ever see people back down on Twitter? Like, it gets to the point where they're like, well, if I can't win here, I'm going to just insult you. Or it's like there isn't going, oh, do you know what? I haven't thought of it like that. No, you're right. It's not, Twitter isn't for that. It's not no. for back and forth. It's a one way and, and you move on. And bearing in mind, people are having constant having conversations about various different topics. They don't have the time or to, to, to think about things on a nuanced level. Some people do, but the vast majority, you'd imagine, just bouncing around arguments on Twitter. So they'll just say, all right, fuck, that's annoyed me. I'm going to say something that's going to annoy them. Bosh, that's that done. Next person, next argument. And then in football, you've got, you're doing that with about 15 different things as well. And it's even worse for you, Jim, because people are directly sending you their opinions all the time, even if you ask for them a lot. Do you know what, though? The one thing I'll say, so I sat down with Rory for the pod, and he said, he said, I saw your tweet about questions for, you know, about the title race. And he said, and I, I, looked, I was reading it, and it was sort of, people were really, they thought it through, and then they said, they said really great questions. And I was like, yeah, yeah. You went, does that happen a lot for you? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I mean, generally, if I like, that's why I use, you know, often use Twitter because I can get more interesting, mm. you know, what, canvas what, what good opinion. That's kind of how I use Twitter generally is to ask a question and hopefully get a considered response back. And he's like, oh, right. Oh, <laughs> it's like, wow. And it's obviously well, a different not, experience for him. Does Rory not get that though? Yeah, different I, energy. Yeah. I, I think he just gets like, yeah, he just it gets a different energy. That's true. Yeah, it's brief. Uh, Thomas says, uh, Twitter can be awful, but if we didn't have it to talk generally to nice people about football, then that, where else then where else would where where else would we with such ease? That's a good point. Harry Adley Indeed. says Twitter brings people together. And Luke says he delete he's been off Twitter for about six months and I don't miss it in the slightest. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Mm. Um enjoyed that. I hope you did too. If you want to spend a bit yeah, more time mate. with us, then get on Patreon. And join the lads. Um, have a great weekend. Come on, Queen's Park Rangers. Um, oh, what, what, yeah. what have you lost in here? Middlesbrough. Yeah, a bit tired. Well, Could have gone it? a different way. Could have gone a different way. We still believe okay. in the boys. And um, I hope I hope it all comes back together. But as you say, t- two, two uh, results one way and then two results the other way. And then obviously I'm going to be back in the doldrums. So come on, Rangers. It'll be fun. Okay. All, all right. right. Have a great weekend, everyone. Lots of love. Bye. See you. See you, mate. Bye.